Ali collage. And before, we're going to bring in the next element, the third object in this collage. But before we do that, let's change some of the colors on around. Uh, let's change the color of Dolly to make it more interesting. Because all of the images we've used so far are black and white. Our setting, our mode, our color mode is uh, shifted to black and white. We're going to change the color mode to RGB color. It will, a dialog box will come up. Changing colors can affect the appearance of layers. Merge layers before mode change? No, don't merge. Changing modes can affect the appearance of smart objects. Rasterize smart objects before mode change? Sure, doesn't matter. Okay, so next we're going to change the color of Dali. Select layer one where Dali is. As a matter of fact, I'm going to change the name of it to Dali and make sure that his image is selected, not the mask. And then pull up the adjustment menu. I already had it open. On the adjustment menu, navigate to hue, saturation. That's the first one, the second line. Click on it. And we've used this in another exercise. And then the properties, will, properties box will open up. And we're going to select colorize. And then we're going to shift the hue, which is also the color, what makes it look like the color, to a sort of sickly green color. There we go. Good. So that's that. That's done. Now he looks a little different, more interesting, and now we're going to open up the window with the next image we're going to bring in is the moon tiff. Go ahead and drag that in, put it near his eye. It's a black and white image. And we're going to uh, use the magic wand tool this time. The magic wand tool, go ahead and place the file so it'll ask you to commit. Well, I didn't do it. Do it again. It'll ask you to commit placing the file after you drag it in. I'm just going to hit myself double click. And then I've already selected the magic wand tool. It's the fourth one down in the menu. Go ahead and click in the black area. The magic wand tool looks for pixels of a similar color and you can make some adjustments. You can decide you want to pick them uh, pixels of a certain color in an 11 by 11 pixel average area or just a point sample, which is what we did. Also, you can change the tolerance. That means how much of a difference it will, it will, and it will allow. We, I, I picked tolerance 18 for this. It's about right for this image. So just like before, you need to inverse the selection. So go select inverse, and then go ahead and uh, make sure that you have your moon layer selected, and go down to the bottom of the layers menu and select add layer mask, and that will mask over the dark side of the moon. And go ahead and move it over to his eye, and you could also go Command T and make some adjustments to that. I'm turning it around a little bit and I'm also going to make it a little bit smaller by dragging in one corner and then double click in the middle to commit that. Before you go on, go ahead and grab that ruler and drag it off the stage before you forget. Okay, you can see here there's artifacts left over from the moon, so we need to get rid of those. Go ahead back to your moon layer, select the moon uh, image, the, the layer mask thumbnail. Make sure you have your black paint chip on top. Grab your brush and go ahead and brush that out. And we're not erasing it. What we're doing is adding that to the already existing the already existing mask. And you can clean up a little bit of the edges too. There's a trick when you're trying to erase straight lines, by the way. You can just click in one place, hold down on your shift key in the, other, in the next place, and it will draw a straight line between point A and point B, as long as you have your shift key held down. All right, now we're up to adding in our last image, and that's the ant. I'm sliding it in just like all the others. And just like all the others, and I'm going to put it on top actually. Okay. 
It won't let me do that until I confirm this that we've moved it in. So I'm double clicking. I think I'll just now I'll select the move tool and drag that out to the top. And just like with the moon, we're going to use the magic wand tool, and this time we can see some of its limitations. So this time change your tolerance, move it up, because we're not just dealing with one color. There's a range of colors here, from very, very bright white to kind of almost light brown. So I'm changing the tolerance to 32, hitting return to select that. And then I'm going to go click around. Holding down, when you hold down on the shift key, can you see there's a little plus sign that appears next to that magic wand? The plus sign lets you keep on selecting more pixels in this color range. So, hopefully getting a little close to the legs in this dark area here, in this dark area here, and this little bit around the abdomen. That looks pretty good. There's some places where it's a little too much, but we'll go back and fix that. One more place here. Okay, good. So now, just like before, we want to go select inverse, and then we can make sure the ant is selected on the layer menu, and select the add layer mask button. Once again, we've lost, we, we were able to uh, remove all the background, background pretty cleanly. We're just going to make a uh, fix up a little bit more here where it doesn't look so good. So here where the uh, antenna got a little bit um, into, got a little bit broken up and, and destroyed by the layer mask. It's being covered over by the layer mask. So we're going to use go on and work with a new tool now called Refine Mask. We go Layer. It's under Select. Select Refine Mask. New dialog box. Very handy. Isolates the object. And we can actually um, undo some of what we did a little bit by, by playing with some of the adjustments. That makes it worse. Um, okay, so one thing you can do is push this button and paint around. That's very, very useful if you're trying to make the edge a little bit sharper. In this case, it's not helping so much. We can experiment with that. Another thing that uh, we can do is increase the contrast. That's not really helping. So this is not a useful tool this time, but it's useful in other times. So I'm going to go cancel, and we're going to do something else instead. In this case, we're going to switch, make sure we have the layer mask thumbnail selected, and switch to the white paint on top. Select the paintbrush. The shortcut is B. And make that paintbrush really small. And then go ahead and paint along where you know those little antenna and legs are. And we can make that even smaller. And we could also make it sharper by, by adding, by increasing the hardness. And so you can see what's happening is we're getting a little bit of that, it's kind of like getting, getting it back from its mask. Right. It's good enough. Okay, so now we have our ant, and the next thing to do is to um, select the Move tool and the Transform tool and resize that ant. I want it to be a little smaller. And then we're going to make a few more copies of the ink. So to make copies, there's a two, few ways to do it. You could grab the ant 
the way it is and hold the option key and drag it out. And when you do that, the first time, go ahead and make a much smaller one. So we're going to have these ants kind of crawling out of the hand. I'm double clicking on it and now I'm moving it onto the hand. And the other way you can do it is by selecting the layer where the ant is and going up here to the layer menu. I have to pull in to show you. Duplicate layer. So I can get ant copy too. And now we'll have a second ant. And I'll just close the layers menu. I didn't mean to open it up one more time and just go back and reposition the ant a little more the big ant. And that would be um, the end of this tutorial. That would be fine. Place to stop. So you can go ahead and save your project as a dolly collage, as a Photoshop native, and you can also save it as a JPEG and put it up on your blog.